Um, welcome back. Uh, thank you very much, Batrudev, for stepping in and filling in our slot. I'm very excited <laughs> to hear you speak and also to see the pajamas on your top slide. Um, so we have Matilda Lelin from uh, the University of Mo Montreal in CRM, and she's going to talk about non-vanishing non cubic L functions over function fields. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Patna, for the introduction, and also thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, so this is what I'm going to talk about is John work with uh, Chantal David and Alexandra Floria. Um, so the main object, uh, well, the only object that I'm going to discuss um, is uh, Dirichet L functions. And what I, I'm interested in um, has to do with uh, the moments, okay? So in principle, if we start from, um, say, a number fields, what we are looking at is the sum um, of L in one half chi uh, to the power of K, where um, the character chi uh, is a primitive character uh, of con modulo D with D bounded by certain X. And so we are interested in estimating this. So when I put a star on the sum, I mean primitive characters. And an interest for this uh, comes from uh, non-vanishing results. Um, so what do I mean by non-managing results? Well, um, the starting point could be Chola's conjecture that says that uh, this L one half chi should be different from zero for um, Dirichlet L functions associated um, to primitive characters. So initially it was formulated for quadratic, but um, suspected uh, more general. So why are these um, why are um, the moments associated to non-vanishing results? Well, uh, one can do actually is, is kind of an exercise one can do by uh, Cauchy Schwarz, um, comparing the first moment with the second moment, and the number um, the number of characters that we have up to with conductor up to x. But you put a one, but you can put a one. Um, so when you do this Cauchy Schwarz, you can put a one only when L of one half chi is different from zero. You don't have to put a one when um, the function is zero. And so that this um, second term that I have in, in the first inequality, I mean, the last factor I have in the first inequality is actually the number of uh, characters that the function is different from zero. So by flipping um, things around, we get a lower bound for the number of characters for the, that the L function at the center value is different from zero by just um, the square of the first moment divided by the second moment. Now, what is known for um, quadratic L functions? So there is actually very uh, precise conjecture that is more precise than what I wrote here, um, but um, the K moment, is asymptotically um, x times log of x to the power of k uh, times k plus one over two with some constant ck. Um, so this is a conjecture coming from random matrix theory, but um, it is known for k equals one, two, three, and, uh, and four under GRH. Now, if we go back to the um, Cauchy-Schwarz inequality that I mentioned uh, before, then um, if we plug k equals one there, um, so for log of x, we get log of x to one half. And if you plug a, uh, k equals two, we get log of x to the q, uh, to the three half, sorry. And so when you do um, Cauchy-Schwarz, actually the non-vanishing is greater or equal than x over log of x um, up to constant. And well, that is some result, but it's not maybe the result we would expect because the number of characters is about x. So this gives, um, although this gives an infinitely many non-vanishing characters, it doesn't give a positive proportion because the, propor uh, the proportion is one over log of x and that goes to zero when x goes to infinity. And uh, so from, from this, I mean, even um, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, 
is the conjecture is proven from one to three and four under GRH, but um, the, already this is uh, not uh, is not maybe the, the result we will expect. And um, so an uh, an idea to come around this problem um, came from uh, the work of Sound, who use uh, mollifier moments to actually prove that um, a positive proportion, so seven eight of the characters. Um, have the function that is different from zero. This is for the quadratic case. And the idea, okay, so I'm giving a very rough idea, is to consider some uh, function of, of chi and, well, actually x, that behaves a little bit um, like the inverse of the L function, when the L function is different from zero. So instead of considering the moment, you multiply each factor by this function that looks like the inverse of the L uh, function, and so each, each term. And so basically what you are doing morally is summing a bunch of ones. And so what you expect to get, uh, because like I said, there are X, um, so the order of the number of um, characters is X, so what you expect with this modification of the moment is to get X. And so this is what sound got. Uh, so for the first moment, something that is the size of X. And for the second moment, again, the size of X. So before we have these different powers of log multiplying. Okay, so when one can apply cauchy schwarz there and get the positive proportion. Now, what I'm interested in this talk is um, cubic characters. And so um, what is known for cubic characters over um, number field is not much. So again, there is a conjecture and the conjecture is kind of nice because um, it gives the K moment uh, essentially as a constant times X. Um, but the problem here is that we only know things about the first moment. We don't know anything about the second moment. I mean, we have some bounds, but they are not so good. Um, so for, for the first moment over Q, this was um, computed by um, Bayer and Young, who obtained like a smooth version of the first moment to be asymptotically uh, constant times X. And then in this case, because the third roots of unity um, are not elements, are not rational numbers. So you could think also of um, the case where the third roots of unity are on the base field. So, and, and so there is this sort of two cases. So when the roots of unity are not in the base field, this is called the non kumer case. And when they are, this is called the Kummer case. So you get uh, like Heckel functions. And for that case, actually the number of characters now becomes X times log X. And um, there's only a result that is not for the whole family. So it's a first moment, but taking a thin family. So taking something akin to getting square root conductors, um, sorry, square free conductors. And, um, and so the result is that the first moment is at the, the size of X for this thin family. But it should be that the whole family should give the first moment X log X. So this is what is known for cubic over um, number fields. And then I want to talk for the rest of the talk, I want to talk about uh, function fields. And so basically we're going to replace Q but um, by FQ of T. And what is important here is that um, my, my norm, so the, the norm that before was the size of X that we had before, now is Q to the degree of a polynomial. So the norm of a polynomial is Q to the degree of a polynomial. And so I'm going to sum up to Q to some number. Uh, but it's more than that. Uh, so when, when thinking about characters, um, I'm going to think about the character associated to the extension. And I'm going to think of this extension. So for quadratic characters, it will be some hyperelliptic associated to some hyperelliptic cover. Um, and so then it, it will be given in terms of a genus. So I'm going to be um, thinking, so instead of X, I will have something like Q to the 2G plus one. 
And uh, one thing also that is important about number about function fields versus number fields is that um, in there the Riemann hypothesis is true, and, uh, and so we get uh, many many things for free, or many results that are unconditional. Okay, so what what is known for quadratic um, characters in this case? Well, again, um, there is a conjecture for the k moment, and if you look at um, how this is written, actually it's exactly the same conjecture that I wrote before, except that now x is replaced by q to the 2g plus 1. And so, and instead of log of x, I have 2g plus 1, but I have exactly the same power of um, this log of x or 2g plus 1. And the moment that I'm considering is overall the quadratic, uh, the primitive quadratic uh, characters would, that have fixed genus. So again, one way of thinking is that um, if the conductor is some polynomial D, this will be associated to Y squared equals D, and um, D will be square free and have degree 2G plus one. So that's where the G is coming from. Now for the qubit, this relationship is a bit more complicated. Um, so what is known for quadratic is essentially the cases K um, one, two, three, and four. And here, like I said, the Riemann hypothesis is true, things are unconditional. And also um, there is a result of non-vanishing by Bui and Floria um, that um, is actually using one level density. So it's, it's not using moments, uh, but it's a very nice, it's 94%. So it's, um, 94% of non-vanishing. Um, however, <laughs> there is also a result on vanishing. Uh, so there are infinitely many uh, characters for which the L function actually does vanish. So um, now, again, before we get too nervous about it, I mean, even though they are infinitely many, the size is much smaller than, um, than the total size of the set of the characters, okay? So this is due to Wan Lin Li, and it was very surprising uh, when it came out. So about cubic characters, um, what we have is um, we were able to compute the first moment, and that in the two cases that I mentioned before, namely non-Kumer and Kumer. So the first one, when Q is congruent to two mod three, uh, so in my base field of Q of T, there, uh, we don't have the third root of unity. Uh, so this is the non-Kumar case. It's sort of analogous to the result of Bayer and Young that I mentioned before. And then for the Kumar case, um, we, we were able to, to go over all the characters. Uh, so this is Q congruent to one mod three. So the third roots of unity are in the base field. Um, and then we get something that is the size of um, Q to the G log, um, I mean, log of Q to the G, which is G. So again, it's something that makes sense. Now, if we try to use those results and combine with some uh, standard bounds for the second moment, we get a non-vanishing of um, Q to the G over G, essentially. So again, this is like the x over log x that we had before. So it's, it's not so good. Um, this has been improved. Um, so in a very recent paper of Ellen Berlin and uh, Schusterman, they proved using other methods uh, from algebra geometry, the non-vanishing of greater than Q to a G over square root of G. Uh, but it's a still uh, non, a, a non-positive proportion. And um, the result I wanted to present uh, today has to do with that for the non-Kumar case, we got a positive proportion of non-vanishing. Okay, and uh, so it's greater or equal than some constant times Q to the G, and the constant is some number that we can compute. Okay, and again, uh, Q to the G is the size of the number of characters. So this is why this is a positive uh, proportion. Okay, so the general strategy for um, proving this result has to do with um, evaluating the first uh, modified moment and bounding the second modified moment and then using cauchy schwarz like the exactly what I described before. 
now for the first modified moment, this is um, actually it's not very different than the computation of the first moment that, well, I didn't describe the computation, but the result I gave you with the first moment for Kumar and non Kumar, this is more or less um, the same proof. So the ingredients that we use um, are uh, the approximate functional equation. Uh, we use Perron formula to estimate the main term. Uh, we use um, the Lindelof uh, hypothesis, which is true here, uh, to bound some, uh, some other terms. So they are basically the approximate functional equation gives like a principal term and a dual term. And the main term comes from summing over the cubes inside the principal term. And then to get rid of the non-cubes, we have to bundle with the Lindelof um, hypothesis or the Lindelof bound. And then for the dual terms, uh, we had to um, bound them using estimates that had to do with cubic Gauss sums. And that's actually quite complicated because cubic Gauss sums are very chaotic. So studying this is um, quite involved. Now, the new thing has to do with bounding the second moment by some constant times q to the g. And for that, we use um, different ideas coming from uh, the work of uh, Sandra Darashan on almost sharp bounds for moments of the Riemann zeta function, Harper on uh, sharp bounds of the Riemann zeta function, and then uh, Lester and uh, Ratziwil, who did a uh, sharp bounds of for modified moments in the family of quadratic uh, twists of modular forms. Um, so I wanted to mention some of the ingredients that we have in the proof. Um, so first we start with the bound of the log of the L function by uh, a short Dirichlet polynomial. Um, and basically here in this, this bound, there is some a sort of balance that we need to keep. So the first term is the sum, uh, it's a Dirichlet polynomial up to certain degree of, so we do the sum over the prime polynomials up to certain degree n. So obviously the smaller n, the better, but then we have a term of g over n. So obviously there we want n to be big. Um, so to give you an idea, n is going to be some very, very, very small constant times g. And then, uh, so this gives like a bound for the log of L, but we want to bound powers of log, or, or, sorry, powers of L. And so we have to take the exponential. And then to bound the exponential, we use some, uh, some trick that basically bounds uh, the exponential with the sum, finite sum um, under certain conditions. Um, so I just mentioned that there is certain conditions on the argument of the exponential. So the argument of the exponential cannot be too big. Um, and basically, okay, so basically if we apply this bound for the exponential, so we end up with powers of, um, yeah, so powers of T. Um, so basically, well, we had to work over those powers. And so when we work over those powers, I mean, it's some combinatoric things that give us an idea of what the, um, what the modifier should be. And so this gives the modifier. And then um, let me just say that um, actually it's very tricky to work with this, the interval because if we just take a whole interval between zero and ng, um, with n being some even a small constant times g, we don't get the right size. So we had to actually split the interval into a bunch of very small intervals that, that have lengths over uh, one over log of g. So they kind of go to zero and they become more and more and more. So it's some sort of telescopic thing. And uh, so basically, um, gonna skip that and uh, so just to show you what the result is um, so on purpose i didn't show you the constant before um, so this is a c okay the proportion is um, is 0 0.47 times the exponential of minus the exponential of 182 so if you put this in a computer it gives you zero really but I mean, it is positive. <laughs> so that's, that's, a, yeah, that's a result we have. Um, so it's a positive proportion, but very small. <laughs> okay, so thanks for your attention.
Thank you very much, Matilda. That's a very fun, happy slide to end on. Um, are there any questions? Please type in the chat. I think I have to, uh, yes, okay, I have to unmute you. Where is Arindam? Sorry, I first have to find you. Okay, I've asked, to, asked you to unmute yourself, so you should be able to unmute and speak Arindam. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. 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 So I have questions uh, that, uh, so you computed the first moment uh, for the function field, right? The first moment, yes. Yeah. So I think, uh, is that your method also work if you compute the first moment with, with a twist? Yeah. So the first moment with a twist. So this right. is, you mean this? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what. Um, yeah, that's exactly what we did. So it's it's the same method. It's just um, yeah, it's a little bit. I don't know. There are some extra terms. Uh, so it's like an extra term uh, in some Euler factor, but uh, basically, um, it's the same proof. Oh. So basically. Yeah, what I mean to say is that it's the same proof of what I'm showing right, the result that I'm showing right now. Um, All right, yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Look in the chat. Now let's thank Matilda again. Thank you. So we meet back um, 